Hey YouTube, I'm Histocraft, and welcome to episode 6 of my Roman City Let's Build series. In this episode, I'm building a massive Roman bathhouse. This is definitely my biggest build yet, and it was really fun to create. I hope you like it as much as I do. As this time lapse plays, I'm going to give some background information on Roman baths. If you want to skip to the tour, it begins at 3 minutes and 37 seconds. There were two types of baths in ancient Rome, Balneum and Thermae. Balneum were small and privately owned, while Thermae were state owned and very large usually covering multiple city blocks. This bathhouse is definitely a thermite. Thermite could be much larger than this, but I felt that this size was proportional to the size of the city. Like much of Roman culture, this bathing tradition was inspired by the Greeks, but expanded in scope and scale by the Romans. The Romans could afford to create such elaborate baths, and so many of them, because of their use of aqueducts, which ensured a constant surplus of water. Baths were essential to many activities of daily life in Roman cities and towns. Thermae were, of course, places to bathe, but also places to exercise, read, and have meetings. These services were available to all citizens, as entry fees were very reasonable. When space allowed, men and women each had a separate wing for bathing, but such as the case here, when space did not allow, they would come at different times of day. Alright, let's get into the tour. Here is the complete thermi in all its glory. As you can see, it interacts very closely with the aqueduct. Not everything in the city was planned out, but this was very purposely done, as I figured the baths would be the city's greatest consumer of water.
As we round the corner, you'll see a second story entrance. This feature was unplanned, but the opportunity presented itself. I find the best builds are a healthy balance of planning and improvisation. Alright, now we'll head through the main entrance and check out the interior. Passing through the portico and past the fee tables, we enter into a large open air atrium. In the center of the atrium is the great bath, which basically served as a large unheated swimming pool. Now we'll check out a Roman's first stop upon entering the baths. This first room is the changing room, called the Apoditerium. Romans undressed in here, and left their clothes and possessions in wall cubbies, as seen in the corners. Wealthy Romans left slaves here to watch their valuables. After undressing, Romans would head to the palestra. This open air space was used for exercise. Activities included ball games, weightlifting, and wrestling. Next on our tour is the cold bathroom called the Frigidarium. Romans would visit this room after having worked up a sweat exercising in the palestra or bathing in the hot baths. Now we'll head across the atrium to the heated wing of this thermi. This is the warm room, called the Tepidarium. The purpose of this room was to prepare the body for the hot baths. This was accomplished by heating the air, and in some cases, like mine, a warm bath was present. While Romans relaxed on the benches, slaves would rub them down with oil.
Next, we'll head into the hot room called the Caldarium. Romans would enjoy the hot baths and hot air present in this room. They would pour cold water on themselves to avoid overheating. Now we'll check out the ingenious method the Romans used for heating the air and water in these rooms. Featured directly below the caldarium are four wood-fed furnaces. This entire wing of baths rests on columns of brick, creating passageways for hot air from the furnaces to travel under each room. The warm air would then rise through perpendicular chambers in the walls, continuing to heat the structure. This heating system was called a hippocost. Next, we'll head down into the basement chamber where water reserves were kept. I could only find very vague information about this part of the process, so no promises on the historical accuracy of this chamber. What I could find is that water was kept in lead tanks underground and transported in copper pipes. And some sources say the water was being heated directly in these tanks. So this is my interpretation of that. Now back through the caldarium and tepidarium to check out the last two rooms on this floor. First, on the left of the staircase is the simple yet always necessary latrine where visitors could relieve themselves. Now to the right of the staircase is the Laconium. This room was kept very hot and used as a sweat room. Water could be added to turn this room into a steam room. This room was not a part of older baths, having been introduced by the great general and architect Agrippa. Alright, next we will head up the stairs to the second story of this thermi.
The second story of my Thermai is a place for Romans to eat, drink, socialize, and read. Here we see one of the many lounge areas present on this floor. In this next room is another lounge area, as well as a wine vendor. Many goods were sold in Thermai, including food, wine, and perfumes. Now we'll head down the hall to the other wing. This room features a food vendor, a perfume vendor, and another lounge area. Now we'll head out across the balconies. This is the library. Many Thermai had libraries, as Thermai were a very popular place for Romans to relax and catch up on some reading. Now finally, we'll check out the third story and balcony. All right, everyone. That'll do it for this episode. Thanks for sticking around all the way to the end. I know it was a long one. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe for more content like it. Alright, peace out. I'll catch you next time.